Keeping expenses as low as possible is really important for growing your wealth. So when I recently received my annual credit card statement, I thought it was a good opportunity to see just how I'd spent so much money, especially as I live quite frugally. So here I'm going to break down how much I've spent on my credit card over the past 12 months and where exactly all that money went. To put you in the picture, apart from the bills that I pay by monthly direct debit, such as the mortgage and electricity, everything else I buy, I pay for on my credit card. And then I pay the balance in full every single month. And that gives me several benefits. Firstly, I pay no interest on the money on my credit cards because I always clear the balance every month. It also then leaves the money in my bank account for longer, earning me interest. I also earn points for every pound I spend with my credit card and that is converted into vouchers. So essentially I get free money back for actually spending on my credit card. So with using my credit card to pay for basically everything, I do actually rack up quite a lot of expense on my credit card over the course of 12 months. And it is always quite a shock to see just how much I have spent when the annual summary arrives. So here we'll look at how much I spent over the last 12 months and compare it to the previous 12 months. And remember that I have been trying to keep my expenses and outgoings down as much as possible over the last 12 months, given all the uncertainty we've been living through. My annual credit card summary runs from July of each year to the July of the following year. So my annual summary from July 2020 to July 2021 I spent a whopping £13,227. And when we compare that to the annual summary from 2019 to July 2020, I had only spent £10,000 that year. So now we're going to start breaking it down and hopefully I can see where I can actually reduce my outgoings and save more money. Now I'm going to give running totals in each of the bottom corners here. So on the one side I'll have the 2021 total and on the other side, I'll have the 2019 to 2020 total. And as we look at each expense, I'll then reduce that from the amounts and then we'll see how much money is left and where that money has been spent. Firstly, we'll look at some of those positives. And when I look at my annual statement, it shows the total figure, but then all of the other figures on the annual statement are zero, which is fantastic. So that means I've had interest-free credit using my credit card for the whole 12 month period and I've not incurred any charges or any interest. Another benefit is I've actually received about £140 in vouchers from John Lewis, which is the credit card I use. So that is essentially £140 of free money I've received as a reward for using my credit card. But now we're getting to the nitty gritty of comparing how I spent all this money and how I've actually spent more than the previous year, even though we've had the lockdowns. We'll start by looking at the big ticket items. And I recently, in May 2021, had to pay for the annual holiday. And that is a rather expensive £4,459. I admit this is such a huge amount of money for a domestic holiday, but when you're tied to the school holidays, you have to pay the prices. But I will have to start looking at something cheaper for the following years because I do think it's too much money to pay for a UK holiday. In 2020, we did not take the family holiday due to COVID and that holiday was postponed until this year, which is the one I've just paid for at last year's prices. So in the 2019-2020 annual statement, there was no usual holiday cost, which explains the big difference in the amount of money I'd spent between the two years we're comparing. When I do look at what I spent on days out in the 2019-2020 year, then I only spent £15 on days out. For this, we will have taken days out to places like the National Trust, which we were members, so we didn't actually have to pay for admission. I find it really useful to do this kind of analysis so that you know how much money you spend on different categories. And here we know now how much I'm spending on holidays, so it allows me to budget each month to save up for the holiday so that we don't go into debt to pay for holidays. So using the sum of £4,459, then I know that I need to be saving around £375 a month in order to pay for a holiday of that value. Now I am going to look for cheaper holidays for next year, or if we can travel abroad, then maybe that would be the right kind of figure to be looking at for an overseas holiday. Another advantage of looking at your budget and how much you actually spend and really analysing it, it not only helps you budget monthly to pay for those big ticket items, but it also helps you plan effectively for retirement as well because if you know what your spend profile is, 
then you know how much money you're likely to need in retirement to have the lifestyle you want. If we now deduct the holiday costs from the total of £13,227, we will see that we've now got £8,768 to work out where all that money spent. For the 2019 to 2020 annual credit card statement year, then we need to deduct £15 for the holiday spending, which leaves us with £9,985 of comparable spending to examine. So with the holiday costs aside, we can now see that I have spent less money on everything else over the last 12 months, which does show that I have been effective in reducing my expenses. Keeping with the big ticket items, I've recently in the last 12 months had to replace my iMac. I didn't go for the brand new iMac that had been launched. I went for one from the 2019 year, I think. So it did keep the cost down a little bit. The new iMac cost me £1,209 and I did get a 7% discount with that. Now, many of you will have benefit packages with work and you may be able to have discounts on things that you buy or gym membership. And it is really useful to familiarise yourself with those benefit packages. So through my workplace, I managed to get a 7% discount with Curry's in order to buy my iMac. So we'll deduct that £1,209 from the total that we're looking at, and that takes it down to £7,559 to work out where all of that money was spent. In the 2019 to 2020 credit card year, I didn't spend any money on IT equipment, so that is zero. So we're still looking at £9,985 of comparable spending. Now we're getting into the big side-by-side -side comparison. So the first thing we're going to look at is the grocery shopping. And again, to remind you, this is buying food and household items for a family of three. I do work to a target of only spending a maximum of £250 a month on the grocery shopping. But with the recent huge increases in the price of food, how have I done? Have I managed to keep to that £250 target or have I blown it? Firstly, looking at the 2019 to 2020 annual credit card statement, I actually spent £3,310 over the course of the whole year on grocery shopping. Over the last 12 months, I have actually spent more, even though I've been buying less. And the total has come to £3,652 for the year. So this averages out at £300 a month, which is £50 more than my target of £250. So this just shows just how much food prices have actually increased in recent months. Compared with the previous year when I actually bought more, my average monthly spend was £275 a month. Now we've dealt with the groceries, we'll deduct that amount from the total spend and see what we've got left. So for the 2020 to 2021 annual credit card statement year, when we take away the grocery shopping, that leaves us with £3,907 to work out where all that money was spent. And for the 2019 to 2020 annual credit card statement year, that leaves £6,675 to work out what that money was spent on. So we've got about a £3,000 difference in spending comparing those two credit card years. So I have actually done quite well in keeping my expenses down over the last 12 months. When I examined the spending, the next notable spend was on gifts. And over the last 12 months, gifts have amounted to £1,709 compared to 1,382 from the previous year. Again, some of that may be due to increases in prices, but also I suspect that I was actually spending a bit more money on gifts over the last 12 months, given that we weren't actually getting much other enjoyment in life because of being just stuck at home and not really being able to go out. I do find it quite eye-opening to work out just how much money I've spent on gifts though, and it does amount to an average of about 150 pounds a month. So again, it is really useful to have insight to how you spend your money because it will help you with your budgeting. So here, if I'm going to be keeping up that level of spending, I know I need to be putting aside £150 a month in order to save up for paying for gifts over the year so that I don't go into debt when buying gifts. We'll now see what's left after we account for spending on gifts. So that leaves us with £2,198 to account for for the 2020 to 2021 annual credit card statement year and £5,293 that I spent in the previous annual credit card statement year. The rest of my expenses do show that I've actually spent a lot less over the last 12 month period compared to the previous year as shown in this chart here. 
spending on fuel and train fares is considerably less and no surprise there given all the lockdowns we had and working from home instructions. However, to put this in a bit more context, pre-pandemic I had actually recently changed jobs which had changed my commuting habits anyway and had already drastically reduced my commuting costs. So prior to changing jobs I was spending about or oh, probably £300 a month on fuel and train fares, which is a lot of money for people to pay for commuting. So when I had changed my job, then I did actually work from home quite a lot anyway, so my commuting costs had dropped drastically, and they were around £200 for the 2019 to 2020 year, which is a massive reduction in the amount of money I spent on commuting compared to the £300 a month I was spending before. Now we've accounted for fuel and train costs, we still have a £3,000 difference between the two credit card years we're comparing with comparable spending. Keeping with the car expenses, now my expenses here are down by about half for the last 12 month period and they're down to just £409 compared with £917 from the previous year. These savings are mostly due to the fact that the car was not really used in 2020 and it sat on the drive for eight months without even being turned on. So that meant that I cancelled the car tax for that period, so that was a big saving and I also reduced the amount of miles that the insurance covered me for. So again, big savings there. So accounting for these expenses, we now are left with £1,675 to work out what was spent in the last 12 months and £4,176 that was spent in the 2019 to 2020 annual credit card statement year. Now we look at the spending on clothes and spending on clothes reduced by about half in the last 12 month period. Now whilst I generally don't spend much money on clothes for myself because I have enough clothes and dare I say it enough shoes as well, but it's my growing son that takes up the clothing budget. And for the last 12 month period, I spent £255 on clothing and that compares to £500 in the previous year. These big savings here is probably a lot to do with the lockdown and schools being closed, so my son wasn't able to put knees through his trousers or ruin countless pairs of shoes. This leaves us with £1,420 to account for for the last credit card year and £3,676 from the 2019 to 2020 annual credit card statement year. So we're seeing here a £2,000 difference in spending between the two years for comparable spending. The next category we'll look at is money spent on hairdressers, dentists, pharmacy and beauty products such as moisturisers and that kind of thing. As for hairdressers, it's been about 18 months now since I had my hair professionally cut and I've been hacking away at it myself when I felt like it needed a bit of a trim. So that explains why it's tied up quite a lot now. So lockdown has certainly helped to reduce expenses here and if you think about my hairdressers typically cost about £50 a visit so that's about £300 a year saved in hairdresser fees alone. Over the last 12 months I've spent £856 in this category compared with £1,168 for the 2019 to 2020 annual credit card statement year. But this still seems quite a lot to me so I need to go and look at this in a bit more detail to work out where I can reduce my spending in this area. This now leaves us with £564 of spending left to account for for the last 12 month period compared with just over £2,500 for the 2019 to 2020 annual credit card statement year. The last category is household spending so that's items we buy for the house or the garden and over the last year we've kept that down compared to the £2,500 in the previous annual credit card statement year. So this is due to us really cutting back on spending over the last 12 months and not spending on things that weren't seen as essential. So I find it really useful to do this analysis and work out just where all my spending goes and how it compares to a previous year. And it does show that I have actually been successful in keeping my expenses lower than normal in certain areas. This analysis also gives me really useful information to know how much money I need to budget each month to cover various expenses such as holidays, grocery shopping, car maintenance and all the different categories we've looked at. And that means that money is then put aside ready to use when those expenses arise. And it also gives me that really useful insight to know how much money I will need possibly when I do retire and allows me to budget and plan my pension accordingly. 
So that's all for now. I hope you found this insightful and really useful. Don't forget to hit that like, share, comment and subscribe. And as always, thank you very much for watching.